There's some excellent programs out there now where physicians are kind of, they're like, yes, we want to help others grow because we know that if we're successful and they are following our suit, we're all going to be more successful together. And it's just going to help grow the industry and preserve it. I mean, just really preserve this amazing specialty that we have. Welcome to the Regenerative Warrior Podcast, Doctor's Edition. One of the fastest growing regenerative medicine and anti-aging podcasts in the world. Each and every Tuesday and Thursday, I talk to the top experts to show doctors how to market, manage, and magnify their practice to help more people and make more money. Each episode is short and to the point without wasting your time with pointless conversation. Learn the skills to be successful without traveling to seminars or paying for expensive consulting fees. Are you ready? Because I am. I'm Dr. Ross Carter, and it's time to start the Regenerative Warrior Podcast now. 2 things before we get started. The views expressed by our guests are not necessarily those of Dr. Carter or this podcast. One of our podcast partners has just announced special pricing for our listeners. Wharton's Jelly Allograph for $475 per cc. You heard that right, only $475. White papers are available. This is for a limited time, so act now. Why pay double or triple the price from other providers? To learn more or to order, text your name and the word JELLY, J-E-L-L-Y, to 561-962-1231. Write that down. It's 561-962-1231. On with the show. Hi, this is Dr. Ross Carter with the Regenerative Warrior Podcast. Uh, I want to introduce our guest today. Her name is Christy let me say it right. Davies? Davies. Yes, ah, that's correct. Christy Davies. Perfect. So tell us a little bit about yourself first. I'd be happy to. First of all, thank you for having me today. Um, my name is Christy Davies, as you just introduced me. And I work primarily with physicians that are trying to get into the regenerative medicine space, move from an insurance model into more of a cash-based model and kind of capture that audience. Fantastic. So how would you say this model is different than the traditional model? How has it changed? So this model, you know, for regenerative medicine and kind of the whole wellness model, which is really kind of taking a hold of the medical community right now, are for patients who are really wanting to find a way to preserve their wellness for a longer period of time, learn how to regenerate, learn how our bodies work. And regenerative medicine is kind of a new, we're on the cusp of it. We're just really getting started. There's a lot of news out there in the media where different movie stars or sports heroes, so to speak, have received some of these therapies and have done well. And now it's been isolated and captured in a way that our general public can take advantage of these services as well and really use our body to heal itself, which is what it's designed to do. So we can enjoy the things we like to do longer, more often and stay healthier longer. And that's what we all want to do. We all want to stay forever young. That's <laughs> it. You said it. You said it. <laughs> Fantastic. So where do you fit in on this industry? What is it that you do? I work primarily with physicians that are trying to start that part of the process. And it is a different process for them. They've worked in an insurance model where they've had to submit claims to the insurance, have a, a larger billing process, and have kind of lost their way as far as how they can charge a patient for a service. First of all, knowing how much to charge. Where are these patients at? You know, a lot of times that we worry about, are there enough people that are going to want these services? And helping them overcome some of those challenges so that they can create a great practice that is going to attract those patients that are looking for these service, you know, having them come in, keep them practicing longer. I'll be very transparent here as your physician yourself is that a lot of times physicians feel very isolated in their practices right now. They're fearful because they've been told so long that the independent practitioner is dying. It's a dying breed that you're not going to make it. Maybe they're facing financial struggles because of bad contracts with insurance companies. and They just don't know how to move forward. And so we're losing physicians, you know, that we need physicians right now. We're very physician deficient in our country and outside of our country. But well, let's just talk about the United States right now. Right. And we are very physician deficient because we're finding physicians are retiring sooner. They're pursuing other paths. Depression is setting in, you know, so they may need to retire for you know health reasons as well. And so we need our physicians, our, these genius minds. Um, I actually read a statistic that physicians are more educated than 99.79% of the rest of the world. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, yes, it is. And so we need these people that have devoted so much of their life to keeping us healthy and helping them have a healthy lifestyle as well and have a healthy practice. So that's kind of where I fit in. That was a big mouthful there, but uh, sure. hopefully so, it resonates. And how do you, would you say, what 
areas are most physicians deficient in? Which sure. categories would you say they need the most help in? Sure. That's a great question. Business development, you know, mm-hmm. understanding, taking a goal and putting a plan together and achieving that goal as far as their business setup and their business progress goes, you know, from just knowing, do I need to have a separate business entity? How do I set up my practice for receiving cash? I mean, that's kind of a funny thing. You know, I have doctors like, I don't even know how we would charge or how we would accept, you know, a service like this in our clinic because they have just gotten into the fact of, oh, we build the insurance and the insurance pays us kind of a thing. So right. it's kind of a reverse model. And yes. so just even something times as simple as that. But really the big thing is you have a goal, getting it written down, and then how do we implement the steps to accomplish that goal for you? And when a physician tries to do this on their own, it, they just fall short. It does. They, they get distracted by life and they just don't really yeah. follow through. So you're actually there to guide mm-hmm. them along yep. to follow through. And then when they have questions on certain areas that you can help them with. That's exactly and right. What areas do you think are the best areas that you can help a doctor with? I see the setting up goals, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The legal aspects as well. That's an area that you're strong in as well. So if somebody wants to set this up in Tennessee and they want to know what can I legally do, you can help them. Do you have any advice in this area at all that might help somebody who's thinking about this? Sure. First of all, if you dream about it, you can do it. And certainly there are doctors out there every day that are taking control of their practice again and they're finding ways to overcome that insurance battle and not to be fearful of the fact that independent physicians Physicians aren't going to make it because we're seeing more physicians becoming independent, moving into a cash-based practice or a concierge model or even a combination of both, you know. And I think patients are now starting to realize that insurance companies don't necessarily have the patient's best interest at heart. It's the financials that they're looking at and their bottom line. And it doesn't, and I've said this several times and I know you've heard me talk and I've, I've talked in a lot of areas, but I'm like, you know, we are the most insured country in yes. the world, and yet we are most less unhealthy. healthy. Yeah. Yes, we are yeah. less healthy than we have ever been. Right. And so that kind of tells you that that model is broken, it's not working, and that patients can take charge of their health and say, you know what, my insurance isn't going to cover this. That doesn't mean I can't get it. I right. can find a way to accomplish receiving this care if I really want to. And physicians are usually afraid to ask for additional money because they think they'll either get rejected by the patient mm-hmm. and they just don't know how to ask for thousands of dollars if that's be the case. Mm-hmm. Or they say, well, it might go against my insurance where I'm getting paid you know, from the insurance company. Right. And they may not know how to do all that because right. they've been indoctrinated into the medical insurance game, I right. guess you could call it. <laughs> a so, game you can't win in a lot of cases. No, <laughs> and it's and not very fun. <laughs> and it's the insurance's game. They, they make the rules and they change them whenever they like. That's exactly right. Being that I used to take insurance more than six years ago, I would get these notes of, you know, hey, by the way, you, we've overpaid you two years ago for what XYZ we want some money back. And I'm right. like, are you serious? I, I can never collect this money. And how is that my fault that you did this? And, uh, yes. and I can't verify anything. It was an awful game. I got out of it myself. How much staff do you need to run an office when you don't have insurance? Well, that's a great question. So mm-hmm. essentially, a lot of the doctors, if they're starting with a bare shell, yeah themselves and maybe one assistant. You don't really need a lot of staff because you don't have all that administration sides of things, of the pre-authorizations. How many people does it take to actually use the do it insurance-based practice? You've got your person who verifies the mm -hmm. insurance. They got to, you know, get their card and make sure that everything's okay with Mm -hmm. that and then bill it out, then follow up (laughs) up because they won't pay you and they keep doing that. I mean, it's a nightmare. How much does that cost a a doctor? Well, it's usually at least just administration wise in today's healthcare world, it's three FTEs for one physician. And that doesn't always include your MA. Sometimes you can get an MA that can do a little bit of both. You know, as you're trying to grow a practice, having to have three employees that are trying to help support you, Mm -hmm. and especially with the decreasing reimbursement, that's where physicians are really starting to see, oh my goodness, my expenses way supersede my revenue. And how do I fix that? You know, and they just don't know where to stop. I mean, I see doctors going into massive amounts of debt even to keep their practice just going status quo because they just don't know where to stop. And it is, it is amazing. So you said that you help with the legal as well as the mindset, basically. Mm -hmm. Any other areas that you can really help a doctor in? Sure. Um, We also have marketing support, you know. Yes. Big area. Big area. We got to market. (laughs) Because a lot of doctors are not sure what they can or cannot Mm -hmm. say. That's right. And I've run into this issue myself. It's like, what can I say legally and how do I do that? Mm Because I just don't know that area. Sorry for the interruption again. To find out more about this speaker, become a speaker on our show, have Dr. Carter present at your event or podcast, 
Learn more about coaching, consulting, tissue allographs, exosomes, supplements, legal help, or how to create a million-dollar business card and dominate your area, we're here to help you. Just text your name and any question to 561-962-1231. Write that down. That's 561-962-1231. Or go to our website at drrosscarter.com to learn more. Don't forget about our current $475 Warden's Jelly Special. On with the show. And marketing is big because before, you know, especially in kind of the pain or specialty world, yes. they've really been fed patients from other physicians and right. they haven't learned how to hunt. And so I teach them how to be hunters and good hunters and, you know, really how do they identify those patients. And a lot of that marketing information is critical so that they have all the tools in their toolbox to go out and find those patients. So let's say a doctor starting marketing, what advice would you give them? First of all, know what it is, what services you are offering and make sure you're marketing those services, not services that are over and above what you are currently doing because there's some mistakes that can happen that way. Also know what the FDA is allowing at this current time. You know, if there's procedures that you're offering, make sure that those are the procedures that you're describing well according to the FDA guidelines and know what products that you have. I see sometimes where some of the vendors aren't necessarily there to sell a product. You know, their goal is to sell a product and now that they're purposefully trying to put you in any kind of legal danger, but they don't always know and understand understand that. And that's not their role. That is your role. It's just, you know, it's your responsibility to understand that. And so talking to other physicians or talking to an expert that is there to help navigate those waters for you that doesn't have a, you know, play in that game one way or the other is critical so that you don't make a mistake because there are plenty of people out there that are keeping an eye on what we're doing to mm-hmm. put a stop to it if they need to. So, and more than anything, it's just going to cause you anxiety that's not necessary. You know, you can navigate through that if you've got the right team in place. Right. Well, that's important. One of the podcasts that I've done myself is is called uh, Are You the Doctor, Doctor? Which basically is talking about the doctor is getting education or getting training from a rep who's selling a product. Mm -hmm. And basically that rep is just doing it. They don't have any ramifications if they tell the doctor something wrong. That's exactly right. But then a patient, when they there's a problem, they come to the doctor. And then the doctor is like, I'm responsible because I listened to a sales rep. And not because I knew that area. And I think education is really critical, especially into the area that you're going to talk about. That is true. And this might go a little bit beyond what we want to talk about today, but I think it's critical Mm -hmm. with all of the allograft products that are out there, amniotic tissue, cord tissue, exosomes, all these products to really, and there's a lot of vendors out there. Yeah, there are research deeply where these products are coming from and look at their medical staff. This is one thing that we've had to learn to do, you know, look and see who is their medical director. Is it an MD? Is it a scientist? You know, make sure that they're tied to something stronger because they're essentially storefront labs that yes. are providing these products. Most of this is all from healthy live babies, but where's the placental tissue coming from? And yes. so know where it's coming from. You know, if they're working with a university, if there's studies with their product line, take a look at that. No one's intentionally trying to do anything wrong, but it is important to know where is this? Because as a doctor, you're the one that is going to have to look that patient eye to eye and say, you know, this is where it comes from. I feel like this is safe. I would inject myself. And right. if you can say those things confidently, yes. then... Then, Will you inject yourself? Will you inject your family? Yes. The other thing I recommend, in addition to what you just said, is go to the facility. Absolutely. Literally go get on a plane and fly to the facility because mm-hmm. I've been to many and some are unbelievably beautiful and you see that it's you very feel professional. Safe. Yeah. And then there's other ones you think you just walked into a haunted house and you want to scream. Yeah. And you're like, oh my gosh, someone's buying this product right now. And they're injecting it into their body and we don't know. And just look at what happened to some of the other companies where they just got in trouble for Mm -hmm. So the FDA issues. So you got to be careful of what products you use and make sure, for me, I like to go to the source and not through five resellers. Right. That's so, so important. Well, and I guess that's the thing that's one of the differences is that when you have a, say, a pharmaceutical rep come in, there's a standard protocol around all that. When we're dealing with human biologics, we just have not had enough time to really get all of the boundaries around it yet. And, you know, it doesn't mean that it's not a safe therapy, but it just means that 
just make sure you know the full circle of things and talk to physicians that are willing to stay, like a true practicing physician that's out there doing these cases and say, this is what I'm doing and this is working great and this is who I'm using and follow your peers. You know, this is a time for peers to get together and physicians to really work together. So, Absolutely. We've yeah. seen so many miracles happen, but mm. you got to make sure that you know what you're doing. Absolutely. Otherwise, anything that happens negative in the industry takes everybody down. It does. It does. And, it's, you know, it raises us up, but it also takes us down. Yeah. So you have to be very careful. And I agree. And most people really need doctors, especially, especially getting new in this industry. They don't mm -hmm. really know where to start. They need someone to help guide them through mm -hmm. the problems that uh, most other doctors are going through so you can guide through that and skip all that you know right. and get to the point where you can help people and not be worried about I don't know how to do this or this right. and, and that's really where you step in right yes that yeah. is that is helping make sure that you're partnered with the right either you know if you need help with partnering with the right product line or mm -hmm. finding another peer physician to help support you or just kind of give you a little bit of feedback on what they've done. There's, you know, there's some excellent programs out there now where physicians are kind of, they're like, yes, we want to help others grow because we know that if we're successful and they are following our suit, we're all going to be more successful together. And it's just going to help grow the industry yes. and preserve it. I mean, just really preserve this amazing specialty that we have. Fantastic. So there are some really good programs out there now. Cool. Tell me a little bit about your background. I didn't ask you that. So I went to nursing school in okay. Toronto, Ontario wow. and came back to Michigan and my family, my father was in the stages of cancer at the time, yes. passed away and we moved our farm to Idaho. Okay. And from there I worked for clinics. I found myself working in a pain clinic, which is essentially where I kind of grew and loved the administrative sides of things and really wanted to help independent physicians. And essentially after I left there, I started my own consulting business and through there, you know, I really feel like the universe starts to line things up for you. Ran into someone that was needing help in growing a regenerative medicine product. Yes. And essentially that's really how it started. Very organically. It wasn't anything I was looking for. It was, it found me. And from there, everything just sort of took off. And I've been involved with pain medicine for a long time. Yeah. Worked very hard on getting all of our codes put in, you know, like back in 97, 98, we were yeah. talking about this yesterday <laughs> when the new CMS guidelines, yes. it wasn't even CMS, it was Medicaid here back then. Whatever now they have it. Yeah, whatever it yeah. was. Uh, none of our codes were even on there. And so none of our doctors were going to get paid and how well we rallied right. and paved the way. And now we're at this new phase where, you know, the reimbursement's terrible. Right. I mean, yeah. when you look at some of the reimbursements for some of these Especially. insurance companies, and I feel physicians are in a position now where they can fight back. They right. can charge what they're worth. Yep. I think we're going to see more and more doctors going back for a true fee for service. I come to see you for yep. a treatment. I pay you. I don't pay the insurance company. Exactly right. And in fact, I set the tone myself. Like when we go in to see our physicians, yes. I'm just like, I don't bill my insurance. I'm going to write you a check. I love it. And you know, then. I do that myself. Uh, yes. That's how I do it. Set it's the funny tone. when you yeah. walk in with a credit card, they treat you really well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when you say, can I please pay my bill today? They're they're, like, they, sometimes they don't know what to say. I don't know. How do we do that? <laughs> I, <laughs> they're like asking every member, what do, um, what, how, what do we do with bills? What we do we know. charge? Yeah, exactly. What do we charge for that? We don't even know. It, it, it's, that. And that's it's so essentially, it's I help doctors help them so they don't have those uh, yeah. situations and that. and that their team can really come to play. I do a lot of team building as yes. well. Um, oh, that's great. Yes. Teams and are training of the staff. Yes. Having the right team mm -hmm. is critical to yep. success. If you look at any successful entrepreneur, they're going to tell you, I did not get here by myself. Yeah. I had the right team in place and mm -hmm. you know, they kind of helped lift you up and how physicians can find the right team because we tend to hire out of desperation, not that they're necessarily the right, right. person. And yeah. we, give promotions based on the amount of time they've been with us, not which help, it, not their abilities. Exactly. Yes, and so we've got to find ways to overcome some of that. Thanks for listening to our podcast. Please subscribe to be notified of all new episodes and also like, and share this to help us grow. To find out more about this speaker, become a speaker on our show to have Dr. Carter present at your event or podcast. Learn more about coaching, consulting, tissue allographs, exosomes, supplements, legal help, or how to create a million dollar business card to dominate your local area. We're here to help you. Just text your name and your question to 561-962-1231. Write that down. That's 561-962-1231. Or you can go to our website at drrosscarter.com. That's D-R-R-O-S-S-C-A-R-T-E-R.com -S -S -E to learn more. Until next time, this is Dr. Ross Carter signing off. Signing off.